Today we're going to begin working on module 21 with lesson 21.1, which is all about parallel lines cut by a transversal. All of module 21 is focusing on angle relationships and triangles. So we're going to be doing some algebra throughout the entire module. So make sure that you're feeling comfortable with it and always have some scratch paper available. Today we're going to focus on some of the vocabulary behind these angle relationships and then the algebra to find the relationship between all of the angles together. So we're going to start by looking at these parallel lines. These are two lines that never intersect. They're being cut by a transversal. A transversal is this line that intersects them, okay, and it forms eight separate angles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Some of these angles are on the outside called exterior angles, meaning it's these ones that are below the lowest line and above the highest line. The interior angles are all of the angles like three, four, five, six that fall between the two parallel lines. That's really important to remember because in the vocabulary, you have to differentiate between internal and exterior. So let's start looking at a couple of different uh, terms. The first term is corresponding angles. These are angles that lie on the same side of the transversal. So if I'm looking at the line T here, on the same side would be either the left of the transversal or the right of the transversal. And they lie on the same side of lines A and B. So they just lie all either on the left or all on the right. For example, some corresponding angles in this case are angles 1 and 5. 1 and 5. These are all on the left side of the transversal. We could also say that angles 2 and 6 are corresponding angles because they're both on the right side. Okay? Alternate interior angles. These are non-adjacent angles that lie on the opposite side of the transversal between lines A and B. So they're not both on the right or both on the left. They're actually on opposite sides. So one on the right, one on the left. For example, angles three and six, three and six. They're interior angles, meaning they're on the in-between of lines A and B. So another set of alternate interior angles in this case could be four and five. It's called alternate because they're on opposite sides of this big line that cuts across the transversal. Alternate exterior angles are similar to the interior alternate angles. It's just that now they lie outside of lines A and B. They don't fall in between here. They fall outside. So that would be angles 1 and 8. That are, they're on opposite sides of that transversal. Or line angles 2 and 7. One's on the left, one's on the right, and they're both outside of the parallel lines. And then you have same side interior angles. Hopefully the same side should be kind of giving away a little bit of a hint as to where you can locate them. But same side interior angles lie on the same side of the transversal. So either both on the right or both on the left. And they're between lines A and B. For example, this is angles 3 and 5. They're both on the left. And angles 4 and 6 are both on the right. Angles 2 and 6 cannot be same side interior angles because one's an exterior and one's an interior. So you really got to focus on whether it's asking for interior or exterior. Now one thing to notice is that you have eight angles here that are made by this transversal in the two parallel lines. And there's great relationships to be seen between all of them. For example, I know that Line A is a straight line that is 180 degrees. That tells me that angles 1 and 2 together make 180 degrees. They are supplementary angles, if you remember. Same thing with angles 3 and 4. Even though they fall below the line, they're still 180 degrees together. Because if I erase angles 1 and 2 and everything else, I'm only left with this line A and angles 3 and 4 that together should make a straight line, 180, okay? I can also look at the sideways and say that angles 1 and 3 
should also make 180 degrees because the transversal is a straight line. Same with angles two and four. If I add those, I also have 180 degrees because they lie on a straight line. There's so many relationships to keep in mind. Let's move on because we're not gonna do this activity. We don't have geometry software with us. So we'll go ahead and jump straight to the practice, which is understanding angle relationships. And the best way to do that is through algebra. I'm gonna move this so I can see a little better. Finding unknown angle measures can be quite difficult when you have so many angles to work with and if you're uncomfortable understanding supplementary angles. Um, but it's very doable if you know how to work with algebra and how to just create relationships. So if I wanted to find angle, the measurement of angle two, when the measurement of angle seven is 125, I need to look at the relationship between angles two and angle seven. So let's take a look. Angle two is here and angle seven is here. If I think about my vocabulary, these are alternate exterior angles. And I need to understand the relationship. Because they're exterior angles, and they're alternate, meaning on opposite sides, they are actually congruent. The measure of this angle seven, this obtuse angle, and the measure of angle two, this obtuse angle, are exactly the same because they're on opposite ends and because they are alternate angles, they are congruent. Just like here, angle eight and angle one would be congruent. They are acute angles that help the others make 180 degrees. So if I know that angle seven is 125 degrees, angle two must also be 125 degrees. What would that then mean for angle one or angle eight? How much would angle one or angle eight have to be? if angles two and seven are 125 degrees? Well, if angles two and seven are 125 degrees and they form a straight line with these other angles, one and eight, I would actually be able to say that 180 minus 125 is 55. So angles eight and one are both 55 degrees because together with 125 degree angles, they make 180, the straight line that they lie on. Hopefully that's making a bit of sense. Let's take a look at part B. I'll zoom in a little bit because I just realized that I could. Um, we're gonna find the measure of angle V, W, Z. Now, when I'm given this angle with three uh, letters, I need to focus on the middle angle as the one I'm searching for. So I need to find angle V. Then I'm going to connect to W and then to Z. So I am focusing actually on this W here, the 3X. And it's telling me that angle V, W, Z is supplementary to angle Y, V, W. Y, V, W, the 6X. And supplementary means that they make 180 degrees together. They are supplementary because they are same side interior angles. That is the rule for that term. When you have same side interior angles, added together, they make 180. Same thing here, angle S, V, W, and angle T, W, V. These two here together would make 180 because they're same side interior angles. Now, the best way to find what the measure of angle V, W, Z is, this 3X, is to create an equation set to 180 degrees because the rule is it makes 180 degrees, same side interior angles. So the algebra that I would follow for that would be the measure of angle VWZ, which is 3X, plus the measure of angle YVW, which is 6X, and set them both equal 
to 180. Let's go ahead and do that math together. Make sure you have some scratch paper with you. Now, if I focus on that math, okay, I am going to be able to combine like terms. In this case, that would be 3x and 6x. If I combine these like terms, I am going to get 9x equals 180. Now, if I solve for that, I would have to divide both sides by 9 because that is the inverse operation of multiplication. And I would cancel out the two 9s and be left with x equals whatever 180 divided by 9 is, which in this case is 20. So right now what I did was figure out that x is 120, that x is 20. But I'm not done because the question asked, what is the measure of angle VWZ, this 3x here? I need to then plug back in x to 3x to figure out what the whole angle measurement would be. So 3x, which is 3 times 20, is 60. So the measure of angle VWZ is 60. If I wanted to take it one step further and find the 6x angle measurement, I would say 6 times 20 is 120. And just to double check, is 120 plus 60 180? Yes, meaning same side interior angles are supplementary. They should together make 180. Let's put that into practice with each of these numbers, 5, 6, and 7. If you feel like you can give it a try on your own, go for it. If not, keep on this video, okay? Otherwise, just come back to us. Working with these angles can be super fun because it's solving a puzzle, in a sense. So make sure you take it nice and slow and really focus on the relationship. It's very easy to understand once you get really good at the practice, or it can be very frustrating because you're missing small steps. Okay, I'll go ahead and erase here, and we can work together to find the measurement of angle GDE. So GDE right here is 4x. I need to know something else. I need to kind of either know what E is or what D is to help me figure out what angle GDE would be, because either angle D or E make supplementary angles with the 4x. So how can I figure out what one of these is? Well, I can look at the clues down here. I'm given angle BEF as 6x. Well, I know that if this is 6x, the alternate exterior angle is also 6x. So angle CDG is also 6x. And since I know that, I can add these two together, 6x plus 4x, and equal them to how much? Hopefully you said 180 because together they form a straight line. So let's try that. Let's do 6x plus 4x equals 180. And 6x plus 4x together makes 10x. So 10x equals 180. So to solve for x, I divide by 10, and I get x equals 18. Okay. All right. So if x equals 18, we are able to plug that back in now to these measurements of 4x and figure out what is the actual measurement of this angle. So in order to do that, I will solve 18 times 4, which is 72. So the measurement of angle GDE is 72. Let's plug in 72 right here, okay? Now, if this angle is 72, that must mean that the opposite across from it is also 72. That must mean the opposite across from it here is also 72, 
which also makes this angle 72. There's so many relationships to follow, but one key thing to remember is that the opposites are congruent. Okay, that's one way to look at it. I look at it as a zigzag. If this is 6x, this is 6x. If this is 6x, that one is 2 because it's opposite again. If this is 6x, the opposite here is also 6x. You can literally follow it like a zigzag. So let's try the next one, angle B, B, F, B, E, F. Well, we said that if this exterior angle is 6x, that means it's alternate is also 6x right here, right? And what we just found out is that this angle is 72. So one way to figure out 6x is to say 180 minus this 72 is going to give us our 6x. So 180 minus 72 is 108. So if this angle is 108, it is congruent to the one across from it exterior-wise to be 108 also. So right now we have 72 and 108. Let's keep in mind those numbers as we go to angle C, D, G. Well, we basically just figured that one out because we said this one is congruent to 6x. So if this 6x was 108, this is also 108 degrees. Hopefully you guys are taking a look, being super careful, uh, following along, trying to understand the congruencies behind all of them, checking the relationships, but what you mainly have to understand is supplementary angles. Two angles together that form a straight line. In this case, it would be these two parallel lines cut by the transversal. They are supplementary and make 180. Once you know that, you're able to build relationships upon the angles that are all over your grid, okay? So take your time, try your best, take a look at some of the videos we posted for you, and good luck.